Okay. So now the Rune Guardian, um, he's one of the unique characters, but his his build is kind of simple. And I only say that because I've already built the Earth enemies, so I didn't have to really go into detail with him that much. The patrol and the roaming was already set up from the um, from the roamer, so I was able to get things to work pretty pretty swell. Um, let's go into the blueprint here. I'm gonna go open up the Rune Guardian. Okay, so the Rune Guardian has some basic, basic setups. Um, there are a lot of nodes, which we'll go through the nodes, but the setup is pretty straightforward. The first setup here, which is actually something that deals with the player, this is for the Shadow Meld. Um, the Shadow Meld, which is a status effect. The Shadow Meld actually allows the player to go invisible in shadows or while crouching in essence um, around the, the enemy so what happens is this checks over and over again to see if the player is crouching if the player is crouching it's gonna set the sensing interval of how many times the enemy checks to see me it's gonna set it to two which lessens the amount of times the enemy can see me within a certain time frame which is perfect then I set a time by function which resets the crouch effect. So I don't want it to be a thing where the player can stay crouched for a long time. This is only gonna last for about 10 seconds. So after 10 seconds, the player is going to be able to see you again and it goes down to force, which is set since an interval to 0.5, which is just normal. So it'll be able to see you, you know, every 0.5 seconds or within that interval of a half a second. This is useful right now, but I feel like this is gonna be fine tuned down the line. Um, as you see, I put a Boolean here, uh, which is basically, or a condition that's basically saying if the player is crouch, it will activate either or. Um, I may take away the set timer by function and just leave it to either or, so when they're crouching, they cannot be seen really easy, and when they're not crouching, they can be seen. That just gives the player a little bit more functionality and doesn't stress them. The second build out here is set for the investigate. So when you saw the enemy run over to the lever, I'm gonna write this here. Okay. So when you saw the enemy investigate the lever, um, it had to go through a few different codes in order to do that. So right now what we have is an investigate custom event, which calls the investigate reference from the lever itself once this is activated it's going to get the active location which is a lever and it's going to get a random point around the actual lever which is going to move the ai the reason why the self is connected is because this is the rune scales um, blueprint and we want that particular room we want that particular enemy to actually go to the location once it goes to the location on success it's going to investigate area now in the Levers Blueprint, uh, which we will show at a later time, I don't have it up right now, I'm sorry. The Levers Blueprint has some set um, functions in it that says investigate the area for this set time and then go back home, which replicates pretty much the same function here. So on success, it's going to investigate area, which searches that area. Then it's going to delay, then I have another delay. The delay is to give it a realistic feel. You want the AI to stop, and then you want the AI to look. And you want the AI to stop, and you want the AI to look. This is going to repeat a few times within the investigate area, because once it hits the radius point, it's going to go to another area, and another area to stop. Once that's done, it's going to... Oh, and I set the max walk speed up to 300. This is why you saw him run back. So once it's done, it's going to run back to the main point. So I set an origin there, back to the room's location. And then I set a set actor's rotation so that it can actually face forward before it was facing behind. So I had to switch it a few times so that it can face forward. After you do that, you want to set it back to walk speed. The reason why I did this is, once again, if you come into the location, it's going to run out towards you. I don't want it to run too fast out towards you, so I put the walk speed down a little bit. But once it goes back to its patrol point, it's going to wrap back around to here and it's automatically gonna run back a little bit faster. Um, the AI is smart enough to know that, which is pretty cool for Unreal. I, I was using Unity before and I didn't get a chance to use AI yet, but I can only imagine what that can do in Unity versus what it can do here also. It's amazing. 
And the last one here is the on pawn C win. Now, the reason why the enemy chased me once I got into the location is because I have eyesight on. In this particular one, I'm gonna say protect area. In this particular one, I have it set up to when it actually sees my character, which is not RPP, it's going to do this once. Before I had a way more complicated, but I changed it. I'm um, in the Roamer, it's actually a lot more complicated because it includes invisibility also. Um, so I have it do once. It's going to play a growl sound, which I don't know if you guys got a chance to hear it, but um, should have played a growl sound when it chased me, and it should have played a clink sound and lever. So here it's going to be play sound, and then it's going to move to the location. I'm telling myself to move to a location based on the target, which is Nara. There's a couple of functions here. Now I'm playing around with this one. It's a little funky still, but I'm playing around with it. On success, it should kill me. So I have it set up for camera fade, delay, delay, and it's gonna get the level and it's gonna open. Simple fade effect, nothing too crazy just yet. Uh, if it doesn't see me, it's going to increase its walk speed and go back home once again to the origin point which is the same as above to the room that is it and then it loops back it loops all the way back to set actors rotation which i think i have to fix actors rotation one more time on that because when i looked earlier it was faced off to the side again so a lot of these things are still buggy but then actors rotation goes back to do once and guess what you can reloop the whole thing again and do it over and over again and that is really the setup for the Rune Guardian. Um, this is not a tutorial, this is really just a breakdown. A lot more that goes into this um, in terms of what you want to add in and what you want to put for the actual character itself. So we will play around with that stuff at a later time. But I did want to give you guys a quick breakdown to my thoughts and how I decided to set this up. Let me know what you guys think below. Um, don't forget to subscribe and follow. Thank you. Have a good day and peace.